Scotland is known as the home of golf, and with about 600 courses to choose from, you're never that far from around. The west coast of Scotland is scattered with classic links offerings. It's a true treasure trail of historic golf, with marquee open venues like Troon and Turnbury, complemented by lesser-known links gems such as Kilmarnock Barassi, Glasgow Gales and Irvine Bogside, to name but a few. Anna Whiteley has been on a whistle-stop tour to see some of the highlights. We start our tour of Ayrshire Golf just 15 minutes down the road from Royal Troon at another historic open venue. No longer on the rotor, Presswick Golf Club was the host of the very first Open Championship in 1860 and still boasts many of the original features which challenged the likes of Willie Park Senior and old Tom Morris. Presswick was developed under the stewardship of old Tom himself and is rightly proud of its long heritage. And to be here at the birthplace of the Open Championship is an absolute pleasure and what a beautiful clubhouse steeped in history. Just tell us a bit about the beginnings of the club. Well, Presswick Golf Club was formed in 1851. Golf had been played in the land here for many years before but not in a properly laid out golf course. A number of local gentlemen got together at the Red Line Inn up in Presswick um, and agreed to form a club. And one of the leading lights, James Ogilvy Fairley, persuaded Tom Morris to come from St Andrews to be the first keeper of the green and ball and club maker to the club. And a lot of the existing course, although not the original 12 holes, um, is still very, very much keeping to, to how Morris viewed the course to be set out. This clubhouse is extremely fascinating. I know you've got over 160 years worth of memorabilia in here. Just tell us about this slightly familiar jug that we've got in front of us here. First of all, of the, the belt that was presented to the, the winners of the early Open Championships, the trophy on top, it's better known as the Claret Jug, but it is the Golf Champion trophy. Um, and that, that's what's now presented to the winner of the Open Championship. Well, the amount of history here is just fascinating and, of course, it all started here. So if it's OK with you, we'd love to take a little look around the clubhouse. Please do. Let's go. Let's go. As you wander around the clubhouse, you really do get the sense of history. It's filled to the brim with memorabilia, including the oldest signed scorecard from an Open Championship. The original 12-hole course has long since been extended to modern standards, but still retains many of its quirky characteristics. And Ken, as we know, Presswick is one of the oldest courses in the world, but what kind of a challenge does it throw up for the modern golfer? It still presents a real challenge. Um, off the back tees, it's 6,900 yards, so the, the length is there. The course is in great condition. Visitors enjoy coming here and it's often said is the best fun that they have in a golf course. So that, that's wonderful. It, it's long enough, it presents enough challenges, but it throws in a bit of fun as well. And that's just what you want during a round of golf. And I know the 17th hole, is that that's the oldest hole in Open Championship golf? Well, we believe it is. The 17th hole was the original second hole on the 12 hole course that Tom Morris laid out and that was used in the first open. And by that time the players had stopped taking a scoop of sand out of the hole, measuring a couple of club lengths and playing from there. So they actually played from where the tee is on our 17th hole. And they played to the same green, same bunker as in the, in the way it's called Sahara, which if you ever see it you'll understand immediately why it's called Sahara. Mm -hmm. It's a blind shot over a sand dune. It's been copied many, many times around the world. It's known as the Alps Hole. And we believe that it's the oldest existing hole in major championship golf. Heading now back up north, past Troon on the way, we're off to Dundonald Lynx, the host of the 2017 Scottish Open. Opened in 2005, Dundonald is a more modern Lynx, designed by the famous architect Kyle Phillips. So David Ross, the Dundonald Lynx is a lot younger than its surrounding course, it's only 12 years old. Just tell us a little bit about its origins and the developments over the years. Lost Woman acquired the, the golf course, so Kyle Phillips, who's designed King's Barns, the Grove down in London, has come up with this kind of modern Lynx that plays like a 
a, a classic course that's as if it's been here for forever. It very much has the feel of a traditional length, but as you say, it is a lot more modern. Just tell us about its slightly more, well, modern features. Um, it's not as tight off the tee, so the fairways are a bit fairer. So for visitor play, it's a little bit easier to play. The difficulties is round about the greens, so there's a lot more undulations, a lot more kind of slopes in the backs and fronts of the greens, but a runoff area. So that's where it that's where it differs. So you can't really play the link style shot up to a lot of the holes where it's short and run it in low. So you have to play the slightly higher ones into the, the slopier greens, so you can get the, keep the ball in the green and stop it. A challenging test, it's not difficult to see why Dundonald has been chosen to stage some high-profile tournaments. Well, what a beautiful course. It's an absolute joy for any amateur to play. But of course, next year you'll be hosting the Scottish Open and this year the Ladies Scottish Open. Just how glad and excited are you to be welcoming the pros here? Oh, we're absolutely delighted to have both events. Uh, we had the Ladies Scottish Open last year and it's great to see it come back again. And next year will be yeah, a really good, good year for us. And in terms of challenges and changes that you'll be making to the course going into the Scottish Open? A few changes already been made on a couple of the greens, just changing the undulations um, and flatten them out, get a few more pin positions for the event. But all it will be is let, maybe let the rough grow a little bit and put them off the back tees and see how they go on. It'll be a good test. Well, thank you so much for a great day, David Ross, and best of luck with everything. Thank you very much. Just a short iron across the railway line, there's another classic links to add to the mix at Western Gales. It's another fantastic challenge for all levels of player. So here we are at Western Gales. Just tell us about the unique features of this course. Well, it was founded in 1897. It's over 100 years old. It's a very long, narrow course. It's a, a true links course. And from the railway on one side to the sea, there's only 250 yards wide. And the course, it runs probably two miles long, and only with that width the whole way. So we have four holes going one direction, then we have nine going the other direction and then five coming back the way, so it's quite a unique course and it's very, very popular with visitors. As we know, the Open has come to tune this year. What kind of effect does that have on the area and the atmosphere? Oh, that would be a huge boost for the area. I mean, it's very busy. I know the visitor numbers at Western are hugely up and that's all thanks to the Open being at Trun. So, yeah, we're expecting a busy time and it's a huge, huge uh, boost to the, all the courses locally. Well, as the 1989 Scottish Amateur Champion, you know this coastline and the courses around here better than most. Just tell us about the golfing experience to be had here. Well, obviously starting at Western Gales, which is my favourite course, this is my home club. Uh, this is a fantastic course. Glasgow Gales across the way, which is a, another good links course. And then you go down to Trun, obviously the Open Championship course, which is fantastic. Uh, then you've got Presswick, which is very, very traditional, and then you go further down to Tunbury, which is obviously obviously a great course as well. So, great golfing experience in this area to be had uh, around, around these links. A treat indeed, and easy to see the challenges faced by golfers here. As the most northern of the courses on this stretch of coastline, Western Gales and Glasgow Gales really get buffeted by the wind too. So, why not follow in the footsteps of the champions and check out some of the best courses in the world this summer? Get yourself to Ayrshire for some of the most traditional and testing golf around.